This visual essay explores the Japanese cult film House, released in 1977, directed by Nobuhiko Obayashi, and known for its brilliant stylistic experimentation and visual aesthetics. Criterion termed it a psychedelic ghost tale. There is no word in the English language to define adolescence along the lines of gender. In Japanese, however, shoujo, the term for girl, refers to the liminal period between adolescent girlhood and womanhood. Catherine Driscoll defined feminine adolescence as being different from female adolescence in that it is more than just a bodily change. Becoming a woman is a social process as well. In this sense, feminine adolescence is synonymous with the term shoujo in its definition as the experience of moving out of girlhood into womanhood. Shoujo emerged during the early 20th century as a term to refer to girls who continued their education and therefore deferred marriage and presumably pregnancy. Shoujo then provided a period away from these elements that are associated with socialised womanhood, such as getting married and having children. To be a schoolgirl offers a period of freedom away from the constrictions and constructions of socialised womanhood. Therefore, shoujo is a deferral of womanhood in which the theoretical literature surrounding it presents the figure of shoujo as being associated with immaturity, digression and repulsion towards those elements of the abject that are patriarchally associated with womanhood. My interpretation of this piece is personal to me and therefore not necessarily reflective of the director's intentions, nor even properly reflective of a conventional watching of the film. Of the people I spoke to who had watched it, they either appreciated the film for its aesthetic wizardry and counted it as an experimental masterpiece, or they found it meaningless and frankly a bit mad. As someone who enjoys finding the meaning in even the most meaningless seeming of matters, this is my tribute to House as representing something meaningful. First of all, a synopsis. House centres on protagonist Ashare, also known as Angel and Gorgeous by different translations of the film. Ashari is 15 years old and enjoys a carefree life with her six friends at school. Following the meeting of her new stepmother, introduced to her by her widower father, Ashari decides to spend the summer holidays visiting her estranged aunt in the country with her school friends. However, all is not how it seems and it becomes evident that the house is haunted by the spirit of her dead aunt who consumes the girls one by one in various different ways. Meanwhile, the stepmother and the girl's teacher separately go on a mission to find the girls. The teacher fails and is turned into a pile of bananas. The stepmother makes it to find that Ashari has undergone a particular transformation. So what does it all mean? Is it really all so meaningless? Is it all just bananas? As I hope to show in this audiovisual essay, House is to be read as a metaphor for feminine adolescence, which Catherine Driscoll describes as the social process of becoming a woman. As a scholar of girlhood, my interest is in observing how girls are represented globally and cinematically through various visual and oral metaphors that manifest upon my watching of a film. What is so interesting to me is on how many levels this film connects with the subjects of girlhood and coming of age. As director Obayashi said in an interview, he was inspired to make the film based on the ideas of his 12-year-old daughter. House was therefore girl-inspired, and as I show later, or intriguing realisations to my own teenage girlhood as well. In my analysis, I am interested in what House might metaphorically suggest about the process of becoming a woman in a patriarchal scape, in which the context happens to be Japan in the 1970s. It should be said that House is not a realist drama on the experience of becoming a woman at all. Rather, there are certain elements of Obayashi's style and storytelling that lend themselves to be interpreted widely and symbolically, Hence my interpretation here. In regard to coming of age, Paul Roquet notes that House represents the coming of age moment in the character's personal lives, so that giving up the ability to play with time and space becomes equated with growing up, moving from youth into responsible adulthood. I approach coming of age in a similar way in my reading of House, as a transformation from the position of girl into that of the woman, in which all of the protagonists are adolescent females, considered to be on the cusp of womanhood. In order to observe feminine adolescence through the film, it is important that we approach the Japanese concept of shoujo. 
Shoujo is a period of liminality and, as house shows, all girls must become women under the law of patriarchy, and this is hinted at several times throughout the film. The protagonists of this film may be seen as experiencing the freedom of shoujo and then moving into the constricted construct of ideal womanhood. And this is all set into motion by the scene where Ashari's father introduces her to her new stepmother, who is an ethereal reification of idealised femininity. Here the stepmother foreshadows Ashari's inescapable destiny, conformity to ideals of traditional and modern womanhood. She takes the white scarf from her neck and gives it to Ashari, which she rejects by throwing it away and running to her bedroom. If we consider the white silk scarf as representing what the stepmother embodies, idealised mature femininity, then Ashari's actions represent her as the typical shoujo, digressing from the responsibilities of socialised womanhood. Ashari looks out to the sunset of her girlhood and sighs in relief, unwilling to accept just yet what will become her fate at the end of this film. So what is the fate that she needs to accept? As Simone de Beauvoir stated, the girl, unless she is particularly graceless, accepts her femininity in the end. This is as pertinent now as it was when it was written, applicable to representations of teenage girls in moving and non-moving images, literature, art and society. And this is something that House represents in the trajectory of each of its protagonists. Each one of Ashari's friends may be seen as bearing her own distinct subjectivity and personality that could be deemed graceless, and for this, they meet their demise, disappearing into the house one by one, never to be seen again. In the film, we arguably have two models of womanhood, the stepmother who is presented as the ideal woman, and the aunt who presents an alternative to the stepmother, the unmarried woman. We may observe the two women of the film to be the possibilities that a girl can become, a beautiful bride or an old spinster. It is later discovered that Sashari's aunt died years ago, waiting for her lover to return from the war so she could marry him. The spirit of the aunt lives on, eating up unmarried girls who enter her home. In this sense, you might argue that the fear of becoming a spinster produces the modern woman, as failing to comply will mean that she is unfit to become a wife, and therefore will end up alone and miserable and living with cats. As the sun sets, Auntie gains strength and eventually disappears into the foundations, becoming the house itself. This acts as a metaphor of the domestication that is associated with traditional womanhood, which is interesting if we consider certain terms for the word wife in Japanese. For example, Okusan translates to back of the room, referring to woman's traditional place in the household. In this sense, the film literalises womanhood as being patriarchally defined through marriage and the house. Observing the different ways that each girl meets her fate can provide us with an insight into coming of age as a female subject in patriarchal society. Each character represents an aspect of free and agentic girlhood that needs to be either moulded or destroyed in order for her to become a patriarchally acceptable woman. As part of my analysis, I draw upon the work of Sandra Lee Bartke in her article Narcissism, Femininity and Alienation. As Bartke states, Women undergo a special sort of fragmentation and loss of being as women, and this is represented in the elimination of each of Ashari's friends. Firstly, there is the character Fanta, which is short for fantasy and not because she has a preference for fizzy pop. Fanta is tormented throughout the whole experience. However, no one believes her, thinking she is irrational and hysterical, living up to her name of fantasy. The reality is, we know that Max's severed floating head really did come out of the well, and bite Fanta on the bottom. We might consider fantasy to be a personification of the feminine archetype, which, along with the other girls, who are individual personalities in their own right, eventually becomes boiled down into a controlled, restrained and acceptable vessel, someone who is devoid of personality. Another one of Ashari's friends who needs to be tamed and domesticated in order to come of age is Kung Fu, a strong and determined fighter girl. She is unstoppable, kicking down doors and obstructions in her path, no problem is insurmountable, except, of course, the inescapable fact of her womanhood, which gets her in the end. Mac loves to eat, and therefore she must die. A graceful woman is not gluttonous, she barely eats even. And then there is Prof, the girl who loves to read. Intelligence has no value to idealised womanhood in patriarchal society, so Prof's got to go. Sweet is attacked and consumed by a mattress, 
which I see as symbolically representing virginity and its relation to definitions of womanhood. Finally, there is Melody, the skilled pianist who is devoured by the piano, which reflects Bartke's observation that the female subject is alienated in cultural production, disallowing her from a position beyond that of an objectified other. She notes that, historically, women have had little control over cultural production, such as art, literature and language. Women are prevented from creating culture, instead being framed as objects for masculine heterosexual desire, in which she states, the prohibition on cultural expression denies to women the right to develop and exercise capacities which define in part what it means to be human. House metaphorically reflects Bartke's observations of the process of becoming a woman in patriarchal society as being contingent on narcissism, fragmentation and alienation from one's subjectivity. During the night that transforms these girls into the reification of idealised womanhood, Melody engages with cultural production by playing the piano. As part of her coming of age, she is gobbled up, losing her clothes in the process. The piano plays her, and her body becomes fragmented. This symbolically represents the feminist discourses surrounding womanhood as an experience of fragmentation, which results in the alienation of her from her subjectivity. In other words, in order to become a socially acceptable woman in patriarchal society, the female subject has to compromise her humanity, and this is something that may be seen as being symbolised in the events that occur in House. The space ideological womanhood occupies has no room for the active energy of Kung Fu, nor the indulgence of Mac, nor the clever wit of Prof, or the excitable antics of Fanta. All of the girls, each one a unique embodiment of free expression, gets destroyed and meshed together, emerging as one woman, when Ashari emerges from the house the next day at dawn. Every one of the girls, in turn, meets her untimely demise. A bit like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, only instead of rivers of chocolate, there are rivers of blood. In terms of metaphors for female adolescence as a bodily transformation, it is assumable as to what this represents. Of all the images of the presumed abject horrors of the female body, from menstruation to childbirth, this scene is particularly evocative. So what of Ashare? After an eventful night where her friends all meet their end, Ashare emerges from the house the perfect young woman, greeted by her stepmother, who is also the perfect woman. Now, I'm no expert in Japanese language, but Ashare speaks differently in this scene. Using high Japanese, entering the house has transformed her from the shoujo into the image of ideal femininity. The house, in house, is seen to be as a bodily and societal catalyst for the female subject who enters it, and in turn comes of age. So what of the stepmother who enters the house? As a woman already, the transformation that awaits her is the menopause. However, the ideal woman in patriarchal society does not age. In this case, the younger woman, Ashare, trumps the stepmother who bursts into flame. Ashare is seen to become a woman once she engages in certain activities and behaviours that are a part of committing herself to this process of confinement. Meaning fashionable or trendy, the word ashare is used for things which are modern, cool, possibly western even, a way of being on trend. The term may also refer to the wearing of makeup, getting dressed up and having a sense of refinement. Ashare's name becomes her destiny as we see her giving herself a makeover and trying on lipstick. The mirror shatters and Ashari's face becomes fragmented, triggering the beginning of her coming of age. We also see an image of the scarf that she rejected from her stepmother floating in the mirror. This indicates that her destiny has come back to haunt her and she must meet her fate now. The next time we see her, Ashari has become a cocoon-like spectre of the perfect traditional bride. Prof remarks that this is unscientific, irrational, unnatural, unreasonable. It's absurd in which she proceeds to lose her mind. Madness has been historically associated with womanhood, and House represents this, showing womanhood as being produced from a night of tumultuous mania, as a result from the girl who fights against the inevitable. Girls are allowed a subjectivity and agency, as long as this is limited to the phase of girlhood. Upon entry to womanhood, however, only one type of woman is acceptable, and she is graceful and feminine, the figure of beauty and obedience ready for marriage. Girls are popularly represented in global media and culture as reflecting fears and desires about nationhood. In the 20th century, following the war and Japan's subsequent occupation by America, 
Japan was no different, with the figure of the girl coming to represent both the anxiety surrounding modernity and feelings of nostalgia for the past, arguably something that continues to this day. Throughout the film, the sun bears significant metaphorical meaning in regard to girlhood and womanhood, with the setting sun representing the end of girlhood, followed by the dark night of the soul, a hellish pubertal psychological transformation, and the rising sun, the newborn socially produced woman. If Japan is the land of the rising sun, then what significance does this film have in light of the fact that womanhood is represented as being tied to the trajectory of the sun as it sets and rises? Arguably then, on the shoulders of the girl, the idealisations and expectations of the nation rest. In the film, the girls are shown as looking into the sunset as though they are aware of being on the liminal cusp of their girlhood. For me, Obayashi really captured that natsukashi, or nostalgic feeling, of being a teenage girl, which led to a certain catharsis when I watched the film for the first time a couple of years ago. After completing this visual essay, I was having a clear out of my childhood belongings when I came across a newspaper clipping. It was an image of a girl holding a severed head. Specifically, it was a behind-the-scenes shot from House. So what was a newspaper clipping of House doing among my 16-year-old birthday cards? It was here that I was transported back to a memory of mine as a teenager, tearing out a page from the television guide because it resonated with me in a certain way. I liked it so much that I'd kept it all these years unable to throw it away. Now, after having watched the film and made an audio-visual essay on it, I finally recognised where the image was from. I looked at the date of when the newspaper article was published, and I'd have been 15 at the time when I read it, which, incidentally, is the same age as the protagonist in the film. Was this why I'd felt so bittersweet when I watched the film for the first time ten years later? Was this why I tore out this page in the first place, feeling an affinity to the girls in the photo, both the girl holding the head and the head? Certain texts have the ability to resonate with us in peculiar and subconscious ways, which is perhaps why I felt so compelled after watching House to make this video, because interpreting it became a way of facing what I had felt to be the death of my girlhood, which as this slip of paper indicated, is still very much alive. 